Oh my Lord, Sri Krishna's son of Vasudeva. Oh my Lord, Sri Krishna's son of Vasudeva. Oh, all pervading person of Godhead. Oh, all pervading brother. Offer my respectful obeisances unto you. Offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. <coughs> yes. Uh, and he is independent because there's no other cause beyond him. He's independent because there's no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge onto the heart of Brahmaji. And it is only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge onto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him did the material universes. Only because of him did the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Pujita Kaitra Votra. Dharma Pujita Kaitra Votra. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulanam. Shivadam Tapo Trayon Mulanam. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kimva Purir Ishwaraha. Sadyo hridi avarudyate tra. Sadyo hridi avarudyate tra. Kriti bihi sususu vistakshana. Kriti bihi sususu Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavad Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavad Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from an illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively Here's the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpatura galitam phalam. Nigama kalpatura galitam phalam. Sukumakad amrita drabya samyutam. Sukumakad amrita drabya samyutam. Pibata Bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pibata Bhagavatam rasam alayam. Mohur ahurasika bhuvibhavakaha. O oh, expert and thoughtful man, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. For the mature fruit of the desire to read Vedic literatures, it emanated from the lips to see Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shambhatam Svatkata Krishna Shambhatam Svatkata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Punya Shravana Kirtana Kriyam Taksto Bhadrani Kriyam Taksto Bhadrani Vidu Nati Srihit Satam Vidu Nati Srihit Satam To hear about Krishna from the Bhagavatam uh, from, uh, from the Bhagavatam To hear about Krishna from the Bhagavatam 
Krishna. I'm sorry, uh, to hear about Krishna from the Vedic literatures. To hear about Krishna from the Vedic literatures. Or to hear from him directly from the Shima, from the Bhagavad Gita. Or to hear from him directly through Bhagavad Gita. Is it self righteous activity? Is it self righteous activity? And for one who hears about Krishna. And for one who hears about Krishna. Lord Krishna who is dwelling in everyone's heart. Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. And purifies the devotee who in constantly engages in hearing of him. In this way, I'm oh, sorry. Nasta preesu badresu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama sloke bhakti bhavati naistaki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. Dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo babu kamalo badayas chaye Chaita etar and avidam, stitvam satve prasidati. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso, Bhagavad bhakti yogataha. Bhagavat Tattva Vigyanam Mukta Sangha Sijayate When these purities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate Hridaya Grantis Chidyante Sarvasam Saya Shiyante Chashikarmani Drista Evat Manishwari Thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come to the stage of Asam Sayam Samagram. Understanding of the supreme personality, of, a supreme absolute truth, personality of Godhead. Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto One, Chapter Fourteen, Text Number Ten. Pasyot Patan Naravyagra Devyan Bonman Sadahikan. Darunan samsato durad Bayam no buddhimohanam Translation by Srila Prabhupada Just see, O man, with a tiger's strength How many miseries due to celestial influences Earthly reactions and bodily pains All very dangerous in themselves Are foreboding danger in the near future by deluding our intelligence. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. So this is Maharaj Yudhisthira speaking. <clears throat> Material advancement of civilization means advancement of the reactions of the three miseries due to celestial influence, earthly reactions, and bodily or mental pains. By celestial influence of the stars, there are many calamities like excessive heat, cold, rains, or no rains, and the after effects are famine, disease, and epidemic. The aggregate result is agony of the body and the mind. Man-made material science cannot do 
anything to counteract these threefold miseries. They are all punishments from the superior energy of Maya under the direction of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, our constant touch with the Lord by devotional service can give us relief without our being disturbed in the discharge of our human duties. The Asuras, however, who do not believe in the existence of God, make their own plans to counteract all these threefold miseries. And so they meet with failures every time. The Bhagavad Gita 714 clearly says that the reaction of material energy is never to be conquered because of the binding effects of the three modes. They can simply be overcome by one who surrenders fully in devotion under the lotus feet of the Lord. Well, this is Jashila Prabhupada Kijay. This is the theme that we have to preach to people today because this epidemic or the uh, <coughs> flu is, uh, is a reaction, just as other diseases, famine, our reactions due to the celestial influence of the stars. I mean, basically he's talking about the demigods. And uh, these are types of punishments by Maya, who's only acting under the direction of Lord Krishna. So, therefore, if people understand that the uh, Whenever they're suffering, it's a message from God that they have done something wrong. Just like if your child misbehaves, you give them some punishment, not to hurt them, but to make them understand that they've done something wrong. And when a criminal is apprehended and has a trial, the purpose of the trial is either prove the innocence or the guilt of the criminal. And if the person is, cr is guilty, then after going through the trial, they're given a chance to speak before the final judgment. And if they express remorse for what they've done, it sometimes can influence the judge to reduce the severity of the sentence. But if they do not uh, express any remorse at all, then the judge can give the full sentence or even worse, let's say. So therefore the child is to first of all establish the innocence or guilt of the defendant, and then secondly, to help the defendant understand that they did something egregious and wrong and, and illegal and they should feel sorry for it. That doesn't mean they're not going to be punished, but the punishment could be s somewhat mitigated because of their remorse and acceptance of, the, of uh, guilt for having caused pain and suffering or death of other people. So therefore suffering is to help people uh, remediate or to correct themselves and to realize that uh, they've done something wrong and they should never do it again. And if they understand that, after going to jail and suffering in jail, uh, then they're, you know, depending on their attitude, they may be let loose again into civil society. But hopefully they don't commit any more crimes. So the whole idea is to, to rehabilitate the uh, sick, diseased, and errant uh, mentality of people. So Prabhupada says, uh, the aggregate result of these things like famine, disease, epidemic, is agony of the body and the mind. That's what's going on right now. Agony of the body and the mind. 
And man-made material science cannot do anything to counteract these threefold miseries. Yeah, well, when there was Hurricane Katrina that uh, uh, destroyed most of, uh, a lot of uh, New Orleans, which is a major uh, city in the United States, it didn't destroy the whole city, but it caused tremendous amount of damage. The United States has the strongest army in the world. They could do nothing. They just sat there and watched it happen, right? And, and uh, it's interesting how they give names to these hurricanes, you know, Andrew, Katrina, this thing, that thing. Yeah, because they are actually persons. Uh, they are actually living entities and uh, demoniac living entities in a sense. So if we see that there is overwhelming and unconquerable forces in nature and that, number num that's one. Number two, these forces can be let loose due to people misbehaving uh, individually and collectively. And the whole purpose is to remind us or to make us realize that we've done something wrong. So is anyone thinking like this? No. Are the, are the government people thinking of like this? No. They're coming up with all these, uh, what do you call, fallible soldier s solutions. We need a virus. We need a... Uh, a uh, uh, vaccine. They're all, you know, saying the vaccine is coming. It's coming. You know, it should be here. It should be here by next next year, the beginning of next year. You know, oh, uh, it's, it might happen sooner. You know, and then after all that expectation and waiting and hope, when it comes, it doesn't really solve the problem. And by that time, something new comes up. See another flu, another uh, misery. So. Uh, this is called hope against hope. And all these hopes are false. They don't really give the result desired. Why? Because people keep making the same mistake. They keep ordering steaks and chops and chickens and all these things. And they keep supporting this massive killing of animals and they still engage in illicit sex and gambling and intoxication. And so there's no solution. There's no realization. Nobody's explaining the relationship between sin and suffering. Although that knowledge is there, but people have been fooled by the scientists and the philosophers thinking that they can overcome or correct, as they say, correct the uh, forces of nature. No, they can't correct anything. And they always die before they find the panacea, the, the elixir of immortality that they're looking for. They always die. They, they, although they make promises, oh, another 30, 40 years we'll have, uh, no one will die. The dying will be a, a choice. It will not be an obligation anymore. See. All this is nonsense, but it gives people false hopes that science and uh, philosophy and materialistic philosophy will solve the problems of everyone. So the Asuras, however, uh, who do not believe in the existence of God, make their own plans to counteract all these threefold miseries. And so they meet with failures every time. The Bhagavad Gita 714 clearly states that the reaction of material energy is never to be conquered because of the binding effects of the three modes. They can simply be overcome by one who surrenders fully in devotion under the lotus feet of the Lord. So that's the whole point. This is a great purport. One short paragraph explains the whole story 
uh, the futility of material science and, and the misleading uh, futility of speculative philosophy. But the mass of people are under the impression that these things can be controlled by science and the great pundit scientists of the world. So it's a, it's a tragedy. And uh, if people speak against it, like I remember I was on a morning walk with Prabhupada once, and he, I've mentioned this before, he was lampooning or severely criticizing the scientists. And I had graduated from college not so much before that, and uh, had somewhat of a scientific background in college. Uh, but I had this idea that, you know, science is the solution. And when I heard this criticism of the scientists, you know, I was like amazed. I said, Prabhupada, I've never heard anyone speak about the scientists like you just did. And Prabhupada said, yes, I can do this. And he said, do you know why? I said, no. He said, because I know Krishna is behind everything. I know this. I know this. I know this. Therefore, I can challenge them. Ah, let's see. Now we know how, why Prabhupada can do that. I never heard anybody criticize a scientist like that before. Never. Even today, you don't hear people uh, criticizing the scientists. They're putting all their faith in the scientists, right? Yeah, now the religions, you know, because they got so uh, c much criticized by the scientists and scientists, you know, so, well, we build, you know, bridges and tunnels and we have rockets and we have cell phones, you know, and yeah, you guys have been left behind in the Middle Ages, you know, you're, you know, let's believe in God, you know. <laughs> so, so now, you know, the, the Christians, they, you know, have scientists, uh, who claim the, they're trying to prove that through science that God exists. Okay, that's good. That's what science should do, right? Just like in Seattle, they have the Discovery Institute. And they, uh, they're, they're groups of scientists, Christian scientists, uh, trying to prove that uh, there is design in nature. And it was done by the supreme intelligent person, God. And that's good. It doesn't make an impression on people, <laughs> but it's good. I mean, people are still convinced that there's no God and the, the science is the, is the solution to all the problems. So this is, this is a wonderful purport. Man-made material science cannot do anything to counteract these threefold miseries. Well, we're seeing that right now. All they can do is make promises that they can't keep. That's all. Mm. Therefore, our constant touch with the Lord by devotional service can give us relief without our being disturbed in the discharge of our human duties. What's our discharge of human duties? Krishna consciousness. That's, that's what we should be doing. That's what everyone should be doing. Okay, we'll stop right there. Are there any questions about this? Yeah, it's talking about the demigods. They're controlling, you know, every, it's a demigod, and it's controlling every planet, like Chandra, Surya, and so forth. And those planets have some, ef have some effect on people. Um, it uh, can affect your digestion, it can affect your thoughts, it can affect uh, your, des you know, your thoughts and desires, and so forth. It can affect... Uh, uh, like the sun, right? The sun can be too hot or it cannot be uh, so hot that it gets extremely cold, right? So that's Surya. So he says, many calamities like excessive heat and cold. And then Indra is controlling the rain. So sometimes it rains too much and there's flooding. Or no rains. Sometimes the rains are held back, right? So that's Indra. And if after effects are famine, 
right? No rain, famine. Disease, too much rain or too much cold, right? An epidemic. Right? Uh, people are eating meat and not bathing regularly and, and engaging in unclean activities mentally and physically. So then, you know, like eating uh, pangolins. You know what a pangolin is? It looks like a little dinosaur. The, the Chinese eat them. They take off all the scales and they eat the body of the pangolin. And they don't even cut up the body. They just put it full, the whole body in soup. That means they eat every part of the pangolin. And then, the, and then of course, they eat bats and all kinds of things, see. So, so then don't be surprised that there's epidemics, you know. So viruses that are only in, uh, found in animals jump from the animal to the human being because they're eating them, they're associating with them too closely. So all these things are punishments from the superior energy of Maya under the direction of the Supreme Lord. Okay. So the Lord tells Surya, okay, let's uh, increase the temperature a little bit, right? Or let's decrease it. Or it tells Indra, you know, let's, let's, put, let's start some flooding, you know, or else uh, let's have uh, a drought. I mean, the human beings are not organizing this. It's, it's the demigods who are in control of the planets. And then there's Bhumi Devi. You know, there's too much sinful activity. She'll hold back the natural opulence of the earth. Of course, you know, the, the dummy scientists and philosophers, they don't believe that. They think that they're so, the persons behind everything. They think it's... They try and convince us it's all happening by accident and there's due to gravity and due to this thing and that thing, but there are no people behind it. Okay. Although everything that they make, there's people behind it, right? Amazon, Microsoft, uh, Google, there's people behind it. Buildings, bridges, people behind all those things being maintained by them. But when it comes to the whole cosmos, there's nobody behind it. It all happened by accident. And it's going on by these forces of nature. So it's completely irrational. I mean, they talk about you have to be rational. You have to use, uh, you know, reason. But when it comes to God, there's no reason. Just like one time, this uh, atheist went to see, uh, I think it was Galileo. And Galileo had built a, either Galileo or Copernicus, had built a model of the universe in his house or some building he had. And when the person saw it, he said, this is amazing. And he said, what's amazing about it? He said, you, you, you built this thing, you know. It's a, it's, it's a facsimile of the universe. Did you do it, he said. He said, no, I didn't do it. He said, what? But who did it? He said, nobody did it. It just fell together in my room. He said, no, I don't believe that. That's nonsense. You know, you're kidding me. He said, wait a minute. Let's go outside for a second. So they go outside. So why did we come outside? He said, I want you to look up in the sky. He said, oh, okay, well, what is it? It was like nighttime. He said, you see the stars and you see the moon. Now, when you... Well, you came into my room and you saw my facsimile of the universe, and when I told you I didn't do it, it just fell together, you didn't believe me. Now we go outside and you see the actual universe. If I tell you God did it, you say, I don't believe it. I think it just happened by accident. <laughs> it's, it's irrational. Right? He's insisting that the facsimile of it was made by somebody. But the real thing is that nobody made it. It happened by accident. Yeah. You see? So what kind of people are these? Right? They're, they're, uh, they're not scientists. They're not philosophers. They're fools and rascals. And we should not believe anything they say. You know? But yet we're conditioned to believe them. You know, 
And just like now, you know, Dr. Fauci or Dr. This or Dr. That. Well, soon we'll have the, the vaccine, you know. And then Trump is saying, yeah, yeah, very soon we're going to have the vaccine. I went and visited this pharmaceutical company, and they're making this. And, and you know, so, you know, don't worry. It's gonna, all going to go away. You know? Everyone's waiting for the vaccine. In the meantime, people are dying and, and getting sick and so forth. It's child now, now, but the whole thing is they won't accept the real explanation of it. This is the real explanation. We have it right here. Let's see. Is there a question? Impacted by what? By coronavirus? Yeah. How many people got impacted by it? Do you know anyone in this temple that got impacted by it? How come nobody got impacted by it in this temple and the, and the outside congregation? What? How do you explain that? How, how does this person explain that? Uh, I don't know. Okay, some people got Im impacted by it in England, some devotees, and in uh, Bangladesh. Yeah. It just depends on what your habits are. If you have uh, poor hygiene habits, or you're eating meat and, and engaging in illicit activities, then you'll get it. You know, everybody has different karma. If you have pre-existing conditions, like heart attacks and diabetes and so forth, and you're susceptible to getting it. So does that answer his question? Yeah. So th there you have two explanations. One, not every devotee has gotten the, uh, the, the disease. Uh, we have a whole congregation. Did you hear of anyone in our whole congregation getting coronavirus? I haven't. No. On, the ha on the other hand, there are other places where devotees have become sick with the virus or, in, or even died. So it depends on their habits and depends on their immune system and whether they have pre-existing conditions or not. That's no food says that, you know. Oh, well, there's, there's oh, karma also. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Ordinarily, the devotee goes to the, they get sick. Yeah. It doesn't have to be just uh, because of this. Well, and anything like that is is a reaction to something. But you said some you think you're saying more like that. When a devotee um, is impacted by uh, material injuries, like like diseases, it's not necessarily karma. It could be just a, a you know a preoccupation to someone. Many devotees, many devotees, they die out of sickness, like sickness. No, the the rea no. The point is, that the devotee, in spite of all these obstacles, does not stop their devotional service, right. either physically or mentally. That's the difference. Yeah. Whereas other people say, "Oh, I can't do anything. I'm so sick. I, uh, you know, <laughs> they completely stop." <laughs> okay. Yes, yes. It's, we can't even say more. But then, could we... No, you can't stop saying how incredible it is. Yeah. I mean, it's everything has been said there. So, that's the point. But now, could we, as, as a society, we know we have this treasure. This is a solution. This is a panacea we have. Panacea, so, yeah. yeah. So now... Like, you know, no, that's happen. that's why Prabhupada started temples. The temples is a university yeah, but where we're supposed to be teaching. The people they have a, a prejudice for coming to the temple, but it's, not, it's still like a you know organization like Alaka. They have a hospital, or they have like university, and nothing to do with worship, just to teach this knowledge. So we well, that's why he started Bhaktivedanta Institute. It was to be 
for outside people to learn Krishna consciousness. Do we have a building, like a, a place? Well, they have a building. They have the, the, the whole part of the Bombay temple is, is, is only for the Bhaktivedanta Institute. Prabhupada made it like that. And, this, and the ISKCON is supposed to give the Bhaktivedanta Institute $10,000 a month to run the institute. My point is that we can have that everywhere in the world. Like we have a temple, like in, in, in a country like which country, like America, we can have like big cities. We have a school. Like in, in, in England, they did, right? In the UK. Uh, they call, they, what they call that, I mean, like school. But only for like primary school, like they call it. Avanti, school. Avanti. Yes, Avanti. Mm. So it's just like a public school that everybody can walk, can walk in and, and then you can walk in and then see. Like this is the institute for the soul, science for the science of the soul or whatever. So it, it's not to do worship. People don't have to. Look, we have that here, right? Every day we're hearing Bhagavatam, but how many people coming? One, two, three, four. But again, this is temple. That's the point. Well, there's nothing. I mean, you're supposed to come to the temple, but. but well, w before this, uh, you know, corona nonsense, uh, people were coming to the temple, hundreds, thousands. We we're having festivals outside with thousands and thousands of people. Dis we're distributing books. We're preaching to them. Ah, you, you, just, you just hit the point. Like when we did this festival, people, they come in there. They, they're not to do worship. They just come in because they enjoy the festival. So similarly, what I'm saying... Yeah, but in the festival... The, there's a great possibility that they can get a book. They can see our dis different displays where there's explanations about Krishna consciousness. But what about, you know, we have a college. It's really like, I mean... Well, what are you doing to get that college? You tell me. <laughs> are you doing anything to get that college? I mean... <laughs> so, wait a minute. Whenever you say, you should, if you say, we should, mm -hmm. and then you should... Like, you know, uh, I came here and there was a little house, right? Yeah. Right? And, and no one was coming. Yeah. Right? But I stayed and I, you know, did everything I could to build up a community. Yeah. And then we built this temple, right? And now we're opening up a second temple. And we have farms and we have a school. And, you know, so don't always say you should. You should. No, but nothing happens unless someone makes a determination, I'm going to do this. If I have the possibility, I would No, no, no. Everybody has the possibility. So there's no, no, no if. There's no if about it. Everybody has the possibility. It just depends if you're determined to do it. If you're not determined to do it because you have a comfort zone, then it's never going to happen. And 50 years from now, we'll still be talking about, we should do this. Iskand should do this. No, you have to do it. Anyway, at least that's my idea. No, fine. That's Prabhupada's idea also. You have to do it. You say, okay, that's my project. I'm going to do this. Right. <laughs> whatever, whatever your idea is, you know, you, you do it. Go ahead. That would be good. <laughs> you only have, you know... That's the blessing is this, where every day we're hearing these things and now this idea came into your mind. Okay, okay, go and do it. Make your mind up. I'm, this is what I'm going to do. University of the soul. <laughs> yeah, why not? Why not? This message has to be given. Just like we have people, they, they have a Don't say you should. You sh just think I should. This you should means you're not going to do anything. Or Iskan should. You know. No, you should. Haribo. That's, that's correct, yes. All glories to Srila Prabhupada Kiche. Haribo.